Lock my stitches. Lock my stitches. Now I can save that for other areas of the quilt. This is just to kind of press that fabric down, give it that faux trim. Hello everybody and welcome to the Quilters Apothecary. Today we will be starting our quilt along with this amazing Alaska-based quilt. Uh, and we have these wonderful moose and bears and fish, mountains, eagles. We have the, um, the wonderful sky, which is the um, Aurora Borealis, I think is how you pronounce that properly. Um, and then, of course, we have the sled dogs, a lot of things going on in this quilt. Um, and she wants it custom, um, and she wants it to be a nice custom. It's a gift. So we're going to uh, get this on. It's actually, as you see it right now, it's actually already done because we lost our original intro. So um, we're going to go ahead and go into the quilting and then at the end on the very last segment then we will talk about exactly what we did as you watched me quilt through this and you quilted along with me so right now what i'm doing is i'm simply basting the edge to load this quilt i'm going up i have everything in place i've got it set for five stitches per inch And again, when you baste, you simply set your channel lock, start your way across. If this were a showpiece, I would set my channel lock and I would first do the ditch on all three of these, but it's just a, a lovely custom. Keep that basting within an eighth of an inch. Keep that nice and straight. Okay, so now we have everything basted. And what I'm gonna do next is we're gonna change to 12 stitches per inch for my ditch work. And then I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna ditch all of this, including these little black areas here. I don't know if you can see those okay. And so every bit of these three micro borders 
and these two side borders, which are wide, are going to be ditched within this throat space. And then what I'm going to do is I will change thread because I am using the um, superior monopoly. And then I'm using the blue isocord in the bobbin. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to fill this blue. I'm going to do it a little bit opposite here. I'm going to fill the outer blue to keep that stable. And then I'm going to go ahead and leave this middle green alone. Um, I might leave this green alone too. I'm not sure. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ditch this. And now I'm going to head over here and talk a little bit about this top panel right here. Obviously the quilt is made up of multiple panels. So I'm going to ditch around the fish. Um, I believe what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down a half of an inch and do another straight line in black, uh, this matching black, just to kind of frame that. Um, and then I'm probably going to add an extra frame around this particular panel right here, uh, applique panel. And then I will ditch everything in here and um, thank goodness she has sewn down everything, all the mountains, all the birds, all of that. Uh, it's not just ironed on, thank God. So then what I'm going to do is I'll ditch around here, uh, around all of the flying geese, again the mountain stuff, these trees, um, the outhouse, and then what I'll do is I'll go in and I will put a filler in the white to pop all of that forward a bit. So now I have my stitches locked. I'm going to start with my ditch work. Go up. And you have all seen the ditch work stuff before. So we're just going to show a little bit of this as I do all the ditching that I just explained. Again, I will shift my ruler to keep that stitching right in the ditch. So now I'm going to lock on and we're going to repeat that same process around all of the ditches that we talked about before.
Okay, so I'm just gonna snip my tails. I've locked on here. And I'm gonna start my filler in this blue strip here. And I'm simply going to do a little narrow sash design. I'm doing that old swirl up, echo, echo, swirl down, echo, echo. I'm not gonna go too tight. I wanna leave it a little bit open. That way it's gonna still be easy enough for her to bind. Down, echo around the back, echo around the back, swirl up, echo around the back, echo around the back, down, echo, echo, up, echo, echo, and this is from that basic swirl tutorial that's on YouTube. And actually what I'll do is I'll have Rich load it up on Patreon. And it's the three-part basic swirl tutorial. Two, up, echo, echo down, and I would head all the way across. Now a lot of times what will happen when I'm doing this particular design on a quilt is I would use it on an inner border and I would normally leave this one puffy. But right next to where the binding's going, I like to kind of nail that down um, occasionally, and especially with this quilt, so that that way it's gonna give it a nice straight and smooth edge when she does her binding. I'm not quite sure whether or not this will go on a bed or hang on a wall. I'd like to see it hang on a wall. It really is beautifully done. Back, back, swirl up, echo around the back, back, swirl down, echo around the back, back, Swirl up all the way across. Moving my step aerobics thing here so I can stand on that. Get a good visual and look right down on it. Back, up, back, back, down, back, back, up, back. Back, down, back, back, up, back, back, down, back, back. And I think what I've decided now is that this guy right here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill that one as well. That way the middle one will pop out because remember, I'm also going to leave um, a spot right here. As a nice frame. Okay, so I'm going to go down from the black, because the black I'm leaving unquilted, of course. And I'm going to go down an inch and a half. And when I measure for that, as with any piano key, I'm going to actually line up my straight line right on the seam that's within the quilt. So inch and a half, inch and a half. Inch and a half.
inch and a half. Bring my machine over. Okay. Grab my ditcher. I'm going to go in, touch, out, down, line up, in, touch, out. As I do that, down, when I go in, I make sure before I do that my ruler is nice and flat and pressed and I don't have a tuck right here where this meets. So I have it nice and flat. That's going to hold that stable where I hit that seam and come back. Down. In. Out. Down. In. Out. Down. In. Out. in, out, and that's as far down I can go in my throat space. So now I'm going to go over to the other side and I'm going to repeat the exact same thing. Lock my stitches. And by the way, something that I didn't mention over on the other side is for these piano keys, again, I am using regular uh, the isochord 40 weight on the top rather than invisible. Anytime I am not doing ditch work, I am always switching to regular thread to add strength and stability to the quilt. Invisible is great for ditch work, but it's not something that I would use um, in non-ditch areas. Okay, so now I'm going to go into this green section. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put a filler in here, and then I'm going to repeat up here with the same design, the over and under swirl that we used up here in the blue. I've switched to a matching green thread. I did change my cruise coast start speed mode. I'm on the Innova, so it's actually called the start speed. I've changed that to 400 so that it's not on regular stitch regulator. Makes it a little easier to maneuver in those small areas. Keeps the stitches a lot more even. And I'm just filling that up. Marrying that out with some of the swirl filler. This is not the place where I need to put the bang for my buck. I can save that for other areas of the quilt. This is just to kind of press that fabric down, give it that faux trapunto look, especially when we go in here and we do that. Uh, um, I'm not sure how far I'm gonna go in, half inch or an inch something like that to kind of frame that inner black area. Fill that up. Now start, swirl up, back, back, swirl down, back, back, swirl up, back, back, Swirl down, gonna stop, gonna put my handle down. So we'll go to B camera only. I'm gonna pull over my step so that I can be right over my work. Throw on my eyes. And I like to do something like this when I have multiple narrow borders on the outer edge, just because it stabilizes it again.
and once the quilt is done it just gives it a nice feel for this basic, basic custom. Okay, so I kind of auditioned for this area right here. And what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go in three quarters of an inch from the uh, left end and the right end. And then I'm gonna fill in the inner portion of that. And that way that's still gonna leave that beautiful negative space on both sides just for that wonderful texture. So I've already made a mark, but I'm gonna go three quarters inch. And again, I'm lining up that three quarter right here. I am not concerned that it's going to be perfect uh, based on her piecing. Her piecing is whatever it is. But I am going to keep it even with the three-quarter inch in from each side. So if it narrows or widens, it'll narrow or widen in the uh, center area that I'm going to fill up. Just going to fill it up with whatever I feel like filling at the time. Again, this is not where we're showing off on the quilt. We're simply providing texture right now. Yes, it's still going to look beautiful, but it's not the star. It's just an extra. And that's part of Figuring out your quilt is finding out where you're going to put your just stuff for texture and where you're going to put your main players as far as your designs. Especially for a, it's a lovely custom, but it's definitely um, a basic custom. That was the intention. Lock those stitches. 